created a problem that I couldn't write. Derek works as a travelling salesman. He dreads writing order forms in front of his clients. You think about it all the time, you wake up with it and you think about it and you go to bed thinking about it and it's on your mind. 90% of your day is thinking about your problem. Good morning, Mr Burton. Looks Orange. like a bigger range than last year. Yeah, it's slightly bigger than last mm. year. The striped T-shirt, as is, and to go with that, which is a, is a nice pair of plain. My job is being out on the road selling and very successful because I wouldn't like to show anybody there was a problem. Very trendy, look at that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That was it, front. Very nice. Microfiber yeah. again, nice fabric. Same price mm. as the old one. Class as uh, knee pen. Knee. Derek's struggling to write in front of his customer. On this, we'll do the 12 to 18. And, and the colours we're going for? Uh, just the cream on this one. OK. Please. Sometimes, within minutes of me starting to write, it would kick in, and I'd just I'd go into the stage where I'd say, I'll, I'll write this out in a minute, and I'd just go to one side and write the order out or whatever it may be. As I said, it's, per it's perceived as value for money. It is a good uh, quality. 7.25. As you may have seen, it was... Um, I got... I've started off OK, I start OK, then I feel that I'm being watched. Uh, and then I feel the pressure creep into me and I start to tense. And that's when um, I have to pull, slow down, and I have a, I have a sweat pouring down my back, where uh, I might not show that, but I can feel it throughout doing that um, presentation. I went through a stage where I wanted to break my hand. I wanted to break it to say to me, when it's both fixed, it'll be OK. I wanted to fall on my hand and damage it, or I wanted to do something to my hand which I could say to myself afterwards, now it's been put in plaster, and when it's come out of the plaster, it'll be OK. But I realised that's not the way around it. It was a psychological thing, and I know. But you think of all extremes to get rid of it, because it's total frustration. Derek's phobia only affects him in social situations. It's readily treatable, and he's determined to do something about it. Untreated phobias can control your life. Charlotte's fear of birds means that she won't even enter her local park without the protection of her brothers. They're worried about her and have persuaded her to seek treatment. Is there a requirement? Is it? Where, whereabouts is it? Is it right above? Is it? How high is it? It's up there. They're doing you nothing. Where? When I was about four. And um, I ran into the front room and, and auntie, auntie was, was watching, in there. Yeah, watching birds. birds. The, the film birds, yeah. and it was like... She must have got nightmares from that night, and yeah. it's just progressed. Every time she sees pigeons, she must have gone back to that age when she was about three, four. Yeah. And just had this phobia against birds. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I do worry because you don't know where she's going, and she could be running into, into the road and bus could hit her and things like that. And even lampposts, you could even run into a lamppost, you know what I mean? <laughs> that and that could be dangerous yeah. as well, so yeah. it is serious. And I think people just laugh and think it's funny, you know what I mean? Because they're not going through it themselves. I hope she does get over it soon, though, anyway, because it would be nice to walk down the street with her and she's not scared of birds no more, and she can go... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Trafalgar Square. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Nelly, yeah. Just, see they're holding a pigeon, that would be I wouldn't wonderful. hold a pigeon That'd even if I was cured. <laughs> I'd just give it a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing for me to be cured about my phobia is that I actually am cured, that I actually took the steps with the help of other people and, you know, my family pushing me and saying it is serious, you have to get over it. That would just be such an achievement, to be able to walk out and not be scared of a pigeon. Fear has many colours. It can come as blackbirds, it can come as orange beans, or it can be green and slimy. I do know some of the neighbours have got ponds around us. Over the last few years, they've been coming through the edge from the neighbours' houses, and we think they come up the drive as well. They can get across the road because when, when they're going to breed and times like that, they, they go across roads and things like that. They don't all always get run over. 
This is the garden they're trying to make into a fortress, impregnable to amphibians. It's an attempt to make it as frog-proof as I can. There used to be a big hedge here, um, to come right out to about here, a big, great big hedge, higher than the fence. But underneath was all open, so there was all big gaps in there, and the frogs and toads had come through as they migrated from pond to pond, I think. I always come down the centre of the garden because I like the space around me, because I, I like to be able to feel that I'm safe and there's nothing going to jump out at me. We caught a load of them against this wall because they seem to, they seem to get there and then they can't, um, can't get any further and they go up and down trying to get out. That's the only place I can catch them. A hell of a job if they get out in the opening here to try and actually try and actually catch one. I don't like the gap at the ends of the shed because I know something could get under there. I, I don't mind if it's mice or spiders, but I know frogs and toads like to be out of the sun. It's been like a little mini safari. Me and my son, we've both been, he's been around that side and I've been here and we've been trying to catch all these little frogs, <laughs> get them in pots and take them away. Um, There's no end to Eddie's frog-proofing schemes. <laughs> I've, had, I've had ideas to put mesh over the bottom of it so that they can't, you know, up to about their mesh, um, so that they couldn't get in like another little door. But I think it'd have to be too fine. It, 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 they're very tiny, you know, when, they, when they're small. And even the tiny one's frightening. If she's really confronted with it, that could panic her. All of a sudden, she goes from being normal to being really scared, petrified, shaking. It'd be nice to be free of my phobia. I wouldn't have this effect on Eddie. I'd just be able to go out, no worries. I could pick the washing out, bring the washing in, not be looking around me all the time. I've got to sort it out. I've got to sort it out at last. It's gone on too long. We wear polo sh shirts for work, and my boss wears his buttoned up to the top. And I find it repulsive to look at his shirt buttoned up to the top. I have to wear my polo shirt undone, folded back, so I never have to look at the buttons or undo them. Say, for instance, I was in the supermarket and someone brushed into me or whatever, my automatic reaction is to scream because I think, even though it's irrational, that it's a spider. It's always my doorstep, never the neighbours. They congregate in my garden, never the neighbours. And I see them on the road, I come after the bus, come after the bus, the hedgehog will be around there. They'll be crossing the road more or less when I get home. Why? I wish I knew the answer to that. Roberts decided to undergo cognitive behaviour therapy in the hope of conquering his fear of baked beans. Let's just get a sense of what the most difficult thing to do would be? What would be absolutely top of the hierarchy? What would be, I've cracked it, there's nothing else? Eat it, actually eating yeah, the actually eating the beans. Very hard to believe. Right. There are over a million people in Britain with phobias. The Warnford has one of the country's leading phobia clinics. It sees just 100 cases a year, and there's a six-month waiting list for NHS appointments. A picture of beans bubbling, where would that go? Eight, eight. And what about serving? <coughs> Excuse me, I've just got enough on here in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably uh, same as empty them into a saucepan. About, them. Uh, so, so cooking is actually worse than than serving them. Is yeah, that right? They're bubbling. Right. Good. Okay. What about eating one bean, one baked bean? Treatment can to the outsider look surreal. But for Robert, it's white knuckle stuff. I get a funny feeling. <coughs> Sorry. That would just be below the, the eating a plate of beans. Yeah. Worse than cooking. So just tell me, so you've got this feeling right now, OK? Have you been able to kind of go with it OK? Control, I've just controlled it. Right. What about, we might try next time you have the feeling of not trying to control it at all and just seeing what happens. How would that be to do that? Just an experiment? I'd just probably be sick if I didn't sort of go out, swallow. 
That's a prediction that you're making, is it, that you'd probably be sick? Yeah. So should we test that out? Well, I've been sick. Yes. In the past, or... I understand that. Yeah. And as I say, if you're sick here, well, that's OK. Right. Um, but let's... OK, so let's go back... This is classic um, talking treatment. The idea is to gradually expose phobics to the things they dread most. If I tried to put one bean in my mouth, it wouldn't be like eating a plate. I've got my eyes watering on, so... Yeah. Let's just check this out, make sure we... So handling... This is the... torturous. <laughs> Sorry? This is torturous. Uh, You're doing well. And that's hard to think about. We haven't even got having a bath in baked beans oh, down Jesus. here, have we? Oh, my God. So how would you feel if I, if I got the tin of beans? Um, you, you said that you'd probably... Look away. Look away. What about, you remember we said that actually, like, facing it and di directing your attention to these things was important because looking away was just like actually face going the, out the room. Face the fear. Yeah. I'd stare at them. I'll stare at them then. A, do you want to have a go at that? I'll so this, that. Is, this is like a bit of an experiment. Okay. So I'll just do that. I'm just going out the room now. I'm going <coughs> to get this out of the next door room. 